um, tied up. Um, but um, I'm going to go ahead and get started. I think everybody knows me at this point. Um, I'm Fika Jansen. I'm a physical therapist over at uh, the GW Outpatient um, Rehabilitation Department. Um, I've been a physical therapist for 32 years. I've been here at GW for about three and a half. And I am board certified in geriatrics. Um, that is my um, area of passion and expertise. Um, and that's what um, has kind of sparked my interest in making sure that we're doing everything we can to prevent falls for the geriatric population. So I'm glad that people um, are present again for the um, monthly exercise class. Um, it is being recorded. I just got a little blurb that it is being recorded so that it's available for everybody afterwards. Um, and I hope that people have used some of the other videos from the other, the previous sessions to kind of make sure that they get some exercise in, um, in between the, the monthly sessions. Um, we'll leave some time at the end for questions. You know, I always like to leave about 10 minutes at the end. If anybody has any questions, uh, please stay muted um, throughout the, um, the first part until we get to the question part. Um, you can have your camera on or off. Um, I can see a couple people at the top of the screen. I can't see everybody. Um, and let's go ahead and get started. So as usual, we're going to start with our warm up. And um, we always want to promote flexibility when we're talking about balance. So we're going to start with our shoulder rolls. And we like to do our shoulder rolls backwards. I'm going to do two sets of 10 of these. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You want to make sure that you're sitting up nice and tall when you do the shoulder rolls. If you're sitting in a chair that has a backrest, Make sure you come forward that your back is not touching the back of the chair as you're rolling your shoulders. So sit nice and tall and roll the shoulders backwards. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. So these first two warm ups that we do really what these are focusing are our postural muscles. Um, so they, these are great ones to do if you're spending a lot of time at the computer if you're working or um, just for for social reasons you're on the computer try about every hour to take a little break, do a couple of shoulder rolls, or this next one that we're going to do is we're going to do a chin tuck. We've done this one before. This is the one where we bring our head straight back as if we're trying to make a double chin. I'll show you from the side, straight back. You don't wanna tip your head down. You don't wanna look up, just bring straight back. One, two, three, four, five. Good. Two, two, three, four, five. Three, two, three, four, five. Four, two, three, four, five. Five, two, three, four, five. Six, two, three, four, five. Seven, two, three, four, five. Eight, two, three, four, five. Nine, two, three, four, five. Ten, two, three, four, five. A great exercise to make part of your regular routine all of us as we age our head starts to come forward our spine tends to curve and as i've mentioned before the head is heavy if it's in front of our body it just makes us more likely to fall forward so being in a regular routine where we do that exercise that brings that head back over in line with our body okay 
Um, let's go on to the overhead stretch next. And this is just gonna help us with our flexibility in the sides. Let me fix my screen a little bit. We're gonna do a big reach up to the ceiling, two, three, four, five. And the same with the other side. Big reach up, one, two, three, four, five. Good, again. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Good, I see some of you guys doing this standing up. That's great. You can do this standing or sitting. And big reach, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Good. I'm going to do two more on each side. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And one, two, three, four, five. Okay. So that helps to stretch out these muscles on the side of our midsection. And along with that, a good one to do is what we call a rotation stretch. So we're gonna bring our arms out to the side. If this is painful on the shoulders, you can certainly have your arms crossed in front of you. And you're just gonna to twist to one side. One, two, three, four, five. And one, two, three, four, five. Or I'm going to show if your arms are out. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So arms in if your shoulders hurt. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Good. One, two, three, four, five. Let's do one more to either side. One, two, three, four, five. And one, two, three, four, five. Good. The people I could see on my screen, all oh, you look perfect. Everybody was doing a nice job on those. All right, um, the next stretch is a hip stretch. And just like with everything else, if we're more flexible, we are less likely to fall because we're more likely to shift our bodies in a way that we can prevent a fall. So this stretch is called a figure four stretch. Everybody should be seated. We're gonna cross one leg over the other, and we're just gonna lean forward onto that crossed leg. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Come back. And if this is hard to bring your leg all the way up, you can just cross down here. That's fine. But if you can bring it up this way, that's better. Lean forward, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You should feel that stretch kind of in the buttock. Helps to loosen up the hips. One more time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Let's do that same stretch to the other side. We're gonna cross our leg and lean forward. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good, lean forward again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And one more time. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. All right, nice job. Um, and just a quick quick reminder, if you have pain with any of these exercises, like significant pain, it's not a no pain, no gain type of thing. Please, please stop or do less, um, less severe of a movement. I don't want anybody to push through pain and potentially flare anything up. Um, let's finish up the stretching with our ankle circles. Um, we've done this one before. So all we're doing is circling our foot. We're going to do 10 in one direction, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Now switch directions. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10. If your circle doesn't look like a perfect, perfect circle, don't worry. Even if it looks more like an up and down, you're still getting a benefit of this. And I like to cross my leg because it anchors the leg. You can just hold your leg out. Just don't swing from the hip. We don't want to do that. It should be coming from the ankle. So we're going to do 10 again. One, two, three, four five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then ten the other way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good. All right, same thing with the other leg. We're going to do two sets of ten. So ten, one clockwise, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten counterclockwise, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Again, ten clockwise, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then ten the other way, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Good. And if people have been doing these regularly, you should start to see an improvement in how your circle is looking. This is what I notice with my clients that come in. As people start to do this on a regular basis, their circles really start to look much more controlled as their flexibility improves. Um, and we've mentioned before, an easy one to sneak in while you're in a car, on the bus, uh, waiting in a um, lobby at a doctor's appointment um, while you're watching TV. Easy to do some of your chin tucks, some of your shoulder rolls, or some of your ankle circles. All right, well, that finishes the stretching part. So now it's time to get our heart rate up. Let me set my timer because we're going to start. Um, with a two minute marching in place. So everybody go ahead and stand up. And if you need to hold on to your rollator, your walker, a chair, perfectly fine, your desk, or if you're comfortable doing this without holding, that's okay too. But here we go for two minutes, we're gonna march in place.
Good. Everybody pump your arms with it if you want to add a little extra extra effort or you can do punching motions if you want to add a little extra effort but make sure you keep those feet marching now if, if this is hard to do this standing it's perfectly fine to be marching while you're seated too All right, we're doing good. We got 36 seconds to go. Okay, everybody rest a second. Get yourself a drink of water if you have water nearby. It's going to give me my two second plug to plug the importance of lots of um, fluids during the day. Um, there's lots of research out there that the centers in our brain that are responsible for balance are really sensitive to dehydration. So if we're not getting enough fluids, we're more likely to have trouble with dizziness, vertigo, lack of balance. So I'm going to have some water myself. Okay, so everybody's heart rate should be up a little bit. Um, I think what I'll do is we'll go through some of our strength exercises. And then we'll probably do another two minute um, activity to kind of keep our heart rate up rather than doing all the endurance stuff first and then moving on. We'll do some strength exercises next and then we'll come back and do another um, endurance activity a little bit later. All right, so if you've been coming to the class for the last couple months, you know my, one of my favorite exercises which is the 10 times sit to stand. So let's go ahead and, and do that. We're gonna to try to do it without pushing up from our, uh, with our arms. If you have to, by all means do, but if you can without using your arms, we're gonna stand up, sit down. If that's really painful in your knees and you, you really don't feel comfortable, you can substitute just doing a knee extension exercise. But if your knees can tolerate it, ready, here we go. Up and slowly sit. And two, slowly sit. Three and four and five and six. Seven, eight, nine, and ten. Good, good, good. There's a test that we do when we're testing people in the clinic for risk of falls. It's called a five times sit to stand test. And all we do is ask people to do that five times in a row um, and we time how long that takes them. Um, and if it takes them more than 11 seconds for most people kind of in the geriatric age group, then they're considered at an increased risk for falls because it means the legs aren't strong enough. So if you're doing this exercise regularly, 10 times up and down, you wouldn't have any trouble passing that five times sit to stand test. All right, um, let's stand up again. I'm gonna raise my table up so I have something to hold on to. Takes a second for this table to come up. 
And we're gonna do our heel and our toe raises. And we've talked about this one before. You can raise up with both feet like that. Or if that feels really easy, you can hold on to your table or your chair and raise up one foot at a time. So I'm gonna do a one foot, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. You can do this seated. If you have foot pain or something prevents you from doing this standing, you can do this seated. And I want people to do a second set. So either again, one foot, or I'm gonna demonstrate it using both feet. One, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, eight, nine, ten. And now let's, if you've been doing a one foot technique, let's try to do 10 on the other foot. If you have been doing a two foot technique, see if you can do it without actually holding the table. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And when you're holding the table or um, the back of the chair, you should just be holding for balance. You shouldn't be like pushing yourself up with your hands. Your hands are really just just for balance. Let's do one more set of 10, either two foot or one foot. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Good. All right, let's keep up standing. The next one that we're gonna do is our swing out to the side. Again, hold on with one hand or two hands. If you feel like you're really good, you can try this no hands, but only do it no hands if you can keep your body up real straight. If you're having to do a lot of this, then it's better to just hold on lightly. So we're gonna swing out to the side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then the other leg. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good. And you'll feel both sides working, whether it's the standing leg or the swinging leg. You'll feel both sides work and you should be feeling that kind of right on the side of the hips there. And out to the side again with the left leg. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and ten with the other leg. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 
eight, nine, good. Now this one, um, I'm not using any weights or any bands, but if you um, go back and do these exercises on your own and you're using the video and you're like, oh, I'd like to make it a little more challenging. If you have ankle weights at home, you could use a two or three pound ankle weight while you're doing your swings out to the side or out to the back. Or if you have one of those pieces of TheraBand, you can make a loop and loop that around your legs um, to get some resistance that way. Um, let's stand and do our toe raises next. Please do hold on for this one. And we're just lifting our toes. Again, you can do this seated if you're not comfortable doing it standing. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And this next time, I'm going to kind of show you my the rest of my body a little bit more. You don't want to stick your hips back like that when you're doing it. Sometimes if we get clients who have a tendency to do that, we'll put them against a wall so that you can't cheat by sticking your hips back. It's just lifting the toes. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And on this one, if you're noticing that, boy, when I do that, my feet don't come off the floor at all. My toes do not come off the ground. That might be something to mention to the doctor, you know, next time at your checkup, um, because that, that means there's not quite enough flexibility in your feet to, to clear your toes when you're walking. Um, and that might be something that a physical therapist could help get you a little bit more flexibility in your ankles. Um, we're going to do one more strength exercise, and this is the one where we again hold on to our table or chair or walker, and we're going to swing our leg to the back. One, two, three, four. Try to keep your knees straight. Five, six, seven. Eight, nine, ten, and the other leg. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good. Left leg again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Perfect. Now, if you're watching, um, if you're gonna do some of these on your own with the videos, normally there's always like little breaks where I'm talking or, um, saying something, if you find like you don't really need to hear the, the talking and you wanna do it without the volume and you wanna do three sets of 10 of all these exercises, that would be fine. That's normally if you were my patient coming into the clinic, I would start everybody with two sets of 10, but then as people got stronger, I would probably progress everybody to three sets of 10. So that is something that if you wanted to make it a little bit more challenging for yourself, you could do that. 
Good. Everybody doing okay? Excellent. Um, so let's do another two minute cardiac activity. Um, let me set my timer here again. And um, this time what we're gonna do is we're gonna do some forward backward walking and some side stepping. If you're comfortable doing that, if you feel balance wise that you really wanna be holding on to walk or chair, then just do the activity staying in place. And again, seated marching are fine with this as well. So I'm going to start my timer. Here we go. And I'm going to start by walking forward. And I'm going to walk backward. And I'm walking forward and back. And I'm pumping my arms because I want to get my heart rate up. I don't want this to be too easy. Good, 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 good. We're gonna do this for about a minute. Good. About 18 more seconds. Good. All right. Now we're going to go sideways. And if you want, you can do a side. And you see how I'm bringing my foot to my opposite hand? This is just to make it a little bit more challenging. Whoops, I got out of rhythm. Or we can just do a side step and a side step. When I'm lifting, I'm lifting my foot to my opposite hand. Good, should have not too much longer. Three, two, and that was two minutes. Good. And again, if you're doing this on your own with the video, any, anything that just gets you moving, pumping the arms, pumping the legs, get your heart rate up a little bit. You can be creative. Um, I hope in the future we can have a in-person class and I'd love to see you know, what, what everyone in the group kind of came up with as far as different ways to get our heart rate up. Good, so we have about 15 minutes and we're gonna run through some different balance exercises. Some of these I may have done last month. Some of these I haven't done in a while. I always try to mix it up a little bit. The first one is what we call the four square activity. So imagine on the ground, that you're standing on, on a cross. You're gonna do a step forward, sideways, backward, and back to the, to the side. So forward, to the right, to the back, and to the side. Imagine that you're stepping over something that's like a, a tissue box. So you're really lifting your feet up and over and to the side. Good, forward to the side, back and side. Forward, side, back and side. Now we're gonna go the other direction. So side, 
forward to the left and back and side forward side back to the right forward to the left back let's do that a couple more times forward to the side back one more forward good the higher you make your steps as you're doing that the more your balance is challenged so somebody coming in for therapy, we would start with just tape marks on the floor, but we would progress up to stepping over something that's about six inches high on that. Um, let's practice standing with our feet in tandem. We've done this one before. So tandem just means one foot in front of the other. And if you need to hold the whole time, that's fine. If you can let go, we're gonna try to hold that for about 10 seconds. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. And let's put the other foot forward. Again, perfectly fine if you have to keep holding. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And if you feel like, you know, I'd really like to learn how to do this without holding, but I'm just not comfortable letting go, you could put yourself in a corner. See, I have a wall behind me, a wall to the side. Um, obviously not now because you're in front of your camera, but when you're doing that on your own, having uh, something behind you and something to the side gives you a little bit more confidence. We're going to do this again, standing one foot in front of the other, tandem stands. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And the other foot, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Beautiful. And if that's really hard to get one foot completely in front, if you are what we call a semi tandem, so one foot a little bit to the side. That's still a good challenge. You're still gonna benefit from doing it that way. So now we're gonna do a twist. And let me make sure I'm in the camera. So we're gonna stand with our arms out, our feet apart, and we're gonna twist to one side, one, and two, and three, and four. Just go to the one side, make sure your head turns with you. Don't keep looking at the screen for this one. Six, seven, eight, Nine, ten. I'm gonna just raise my screen up a little bit so that you can see my head in this. And so just watch a second for this one. You see how my head is turning with me because it's that movement of my head that's helping to work those inner ear systems of the brain. So we're gonna to go to the left now, 10 times, one. Good, and I'm moving my head, two, three, four, five, six, 
seven, eight, nine. Good, one more time, 10. And if you ever notice that those things make you dizzy, that you feel like the room is starting to spin, please let your doctor know about that. Um, you know, that could be that something else is going on with that part of the, um, of the brain. Whoops. All right, sorry, I just lost my screen a second. Now we're gonna practice standing on one leg. So again, hold on. If you need to, you're gonna pick one foot up and then if you can, let go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now I know that that's, that's hard if you need to touch to keep up the 10 or if put your foot down, pick it back up and, and try again. Okay, same leg, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now, when I do them with the other leg, I know that there's some members in the group are, who are really good. If you want to do some circles or move the other leg while you're doing it, um, you know, like a big circle or just an ankle circle, that, that's an a, a added challenge. But really standing just on the one leg, standing still is, is terrific. Again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And last time, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And I hope everyone is trying to kind of sneak this one into their daily routine as well, while you're waiting for an elevator, uh, waiting to cross the street. Well, outside might be a little bit harder because the terrain's not even, but on indoor surfaces while you're brushing your teeth, um, a good thing to try to incorporate every day. Um, I think I have two more balance exercises. Hope everybody's doing good for two more. The next one is called the braided side step. Get myself in the screen here. So we're gonna walk sideways. We're gonna cross one foot in front of the other. Now, if you need to hold on, just do one step and then one step the other way. If you can do this no holding, you're gonna just go a couple steps one way and a couple steps the other. Good. And remember when we started, I had you do a, a, a stretch where we stretched our hips. And this is one of the reasons why we wanna have that flexibility in our hips so that we're able to do this. And then that way, if you were outside and you lost your footing because it was icy or somebody bumped into you and something happened, then you have the ability to cross one leg over the other. Good. Good, and one more time the other direction. All right. And while we're standing, the last one that we're gonna do is a high march. So a high march, you see how my knees are coming up really high on this. 
So if you were next to a table, you would want to try to bring your knees up to like that table height. And the slower, the harder. Again, if you need to hold with two hands, that's fine. But if you can do this, no holding a nice, slow, high march, you're doing terrific balance wise. Good. Eight. Ten. Rest a minute and we'll do one more set of ten. All right, again, nice, slow, high march. Two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. That is so good. Good. So I hope that, um, you know, I hope that people are doing these exercises, um, some on their own, um, that it's not just the once a month. One of the things that I hear a lot when people come into the clinic is they say, you know, Fika, I walk everywhere. I'm a big walker. I walk a couple miles because I live in the city. Um, and so I should be fine. But as you notice, when we do these exercises, we actually work muscles a little different than the way they work when they walk, when you walk. So we're able to get the muscles just to that next level of strength. Walking is great. It's great to stay active, but the body kind of gets used to it. And then we don't get our muscles to that next level, especially some of those hip and ankle muscles that you need for balance. So that's my little plug that I hope people can, you know, get into a routine of doing these once, twice a week, three times a week would be even better. Um, but just some, some regular exercise of the specific balance muscles. Okay. Um, I think that's all I had on the agenda. Um, remember we did stretches because flexibility is important. We did warm up because getting our heart rate's important. We did stuff where we twist because moving our head side to side is important. We did strengthening because we want to stay strong. Um, and then we did some different balance challenges. Does anybody have any questions? How, how do we get a copy of uh, the video? Uh, I, I will. Uh... I will send out uh, a, a link to watch it on YouTube at uh, some point tomorrow. And I'll also make sure um, that in that email, it has a link to watch all our previous classes because there's now a, a fairly substantial playlist of Dr. Jansen's classes on our YouTube channel. So you can work through them all um, in any order you like, anytime you like. Um, so if you don't get that email uh, tomorrow morning, definitely reach back out to me. Um, and I will sort it out, but they're all up there. And I'll make sure you get it tomorrow morning. Thank you. Thank you. Question. When we did the tandem exercise, I found that when my head, I, my foot in the back, that back foot was the one that trembled a little bit on each side. Um, sorry, my, something on the, my computer, the volume is, is um, I'm having a hard time hearing you. You said when you do the tandem exercise, it's and I have something the with the back foot. foot? Yes, the back foot trembles a little bit. I'm not holding on. I don't need to hold on, but it just, I feel it trembling slightly on each side. So when you're doing that, like the tandem or standing on the one leg, feeling that trembling, like that wobbliness in the foot, 
is actually a good thing. That means that your brain is sensing that you need to make corrections in your balance and it's able to send the message back to the ankle quick enough to make that what we call postural adjustment. So anything when we're standing with our feet in tandem or standing on one leg, feeling that wobbliness is a good thing. That's, that's not, not bad. Except it's not wobbling down in the ankle, it's wobbling like in my thigh area. No, okay, and if it's wobbling- A little bit, not a huge amount, but- Yeah, and so that might be a sign that you're just a little bit weak in those muscles up around the hip. Okay. You know, that you're, that yeah. because of the effort, you're getting yes. some of that shakiness. Okay, thanks. Or did you have a question? Yeah. Do you have anyone in your group that specializes in gait training? I particularly have a problem with functionally uneven legs from a surgical accident. Yeah, I mean, we, we all do. Um, it, uh, you know, we have two floors um, in our outpatient clinic. We, if some of you have, haven't been here in the last two years, we've gotten a lot bigger. So we, have, we actually have three floors, but two floors for regular therapy. All the clinicians on the fifth floor, that includes myself, um, we all um, are perfectly good at doing gait training, whatever the underlying problem is. So we'd be happy to work with you. We just need an order from your physician um, and we could definitely see you for that. Okay, thank you. Uh, does anyone else have any questions? Yes, I do. Could you please tell me, both times I fell, um, one time I th we thought it was, um, f it could have been fainting in, in wh whatever. So I ended up in the ER for both times. And um, let's see, um, what, what do I want to ask you? Um, Well, yeah, so I, what it sounds like that that you felt like you fainted or you kind of blacked out and that that mm -hmm. caused the fall. Um, and I have to tell you that that is quite common. I would say a lot of people that we end up seeing in therapy who, because they've had a fall, that was the reason for the fall, that they actually blacked out or fainted. And a lot of times that is related to changes in blood pressure, which could be uh, related to the medication you're taking for blood pressure. But it's also one of the reasons why I always highlight the importance of drinking plenty of fluids. Because if you're on blood pressure medication or if you're on a diuretic, you know, one of those medicines like Lasix, ferrosamide, um, with a fluid pill, and you're not drinking enough, then it's really easy as we age to get dehydrated. And then what happens is when we go from sitting to standing or from lying down to standing, especially if we stand up kind of quick, our blood pressure drops. And we see it where it drops too much, we kind of, whoo, kind of almost black out and that can cause a fall. Um, so that's definitely an easy thing for your doctor to look into, to check. We do it here in the clinic too. We check people's blood pressures, lying down, sitting, standing to see if there's any fluctuations. Um, but a good way to prevent that is to uh, make sure that you're getting plenty of fluids during the day. Thank you very much. Does anyone else have any last questions? I do, uh, I think, uh... I see Jane has her hand up, but you're, you're muted there, Jane. Um, so you have to unmute yourself. Um, but while Jane's unmuting herself, I do want to thank you for taking the time to run all these classes, Dr. Danson. Um, we will be on a short hiatus, um, but I do also want to reemphasize that they're all up on YouTube um, to go through at your own pace. And I'll make sure everyone gets the link for both today's class and the playlist tomorrow. But Jane, do you have a quick question there? Yeah, okay. Um, the times that I've fallen, it's not been so much because of my balance, it's because I've tripped. And you know how the sidewalks are. And if you don't lift your foot up high enough, it, I mean, I see people do that all the time. They're shuffling mm -hmm. their feet and even people I know. And do you have, I mean, I've been told to roll my foot up 
but do you have any special recommendations for that? Well, so Joe, really that's, that's one of the reasons why we do the exercises that we do. So a lot of those exercises where we're shifting weight from one leg to the other, like that high march or the one where we swing our leg out to the side is a way to strengthen our hips because we want to be able to be strong enough in our hips that we can shift our weight to the one leg to allow the other leg to come off the ground high enough to clear the unevenness in the sidewalks. So strong hips is key to that, but it's also, we also need to make sure that we're lifting our toes high enough when we're just walking to clear which is why those ankle circles that work on our flexibility and then the standing, when I had you stand and lift your toes up, that's such an important strengthening exercise there. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why I mentioned, if you're, having, if you're noticing when you're standing, like I'm, my toes aren't coming off the ground at all, that might be something to say, you know, maybe I need a therapist to look at this, see if I can get some more flexibility in my feet. Um, because you're right, it's easy on these uneven sidewalks to get tripped up, yeah. um, which again is why strong hips and strong ankles are key for that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I just wanted to add my thanks to Dr. Jansen for giving us a year's worth of wonderful exercise yes. and keeping us upright, healthy, motivated and strong. Thank you so much. Yeah. Oh, you're so welcome. And I hope so much that um, in the future we can do an in-person um, class. That would be just terrific to really be able to get a better sense of where everyone's at um, to, you know, to be able to help you guys um, continue to, to be in the best shape possible. We Thank really appreciate so it. Thank yeah. you. You're welcome. Yeah. Happy holidays to everyone and stay safe. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot.